G'day and welcome to MW Laser, my name is Matthew. In this video we're going to have a look at CO2 laser lens selection. The machine I'm using for this demonstration is a 130 watt CO2 laser machine with a 20mm diameter lens. So before we go too far, let's have a look at some of the terminology that uh, I'm going to refer to. And that is, uh, this here is um, mirror 3 on the laser machine and the unfocused laser beam hits that mirror and uh, reflects it down through the laser lens which sits uh, here and then the beam is focused where it converges and diverges here at the focal point. Now the focal tolerance or depth of focus uh, is indicated here in the blue lines and that is the area that is most efficient for uh, cutting or engraving. Now the focal length is actually the distance from the bottom of the lens to that focal point. So if you have a 2 inch lens, the focal length would be 2 inches from the bottom of the lens to that focal point and the depth of focus will vary depending on the type of lens that you're using. Now on my machine I'm regularly using a 2 inch lens, a 2.5 inch lens and a 4 inch lens. Now the lens that you choose depends on the type of material that you're trying to process, whether you're engraving or cutting. If you're engraving and you want very high fine quality detail, high resolution images, then you'd be better off using something like a one and a half inch lens. Now the one and a half inch lens has a very small spot size, so it can do high detailed and high resolution images and very fine text engraving with accuracy. However, the focal tolerance is very small, so it's very important that you have uh, it very well focused when you're doing that sort of work. The next lens that you would use would be a 2 inch lens which is a good all round uh, general purpose lens, good for cutting through 3mm and 6mm materials, either acrylic, ply, uh, cork and uh, card, that sort of material and um, it uh, has a decent spot size so that it can still do some high quality work but definitely not as high resolution as your 1.5 inch lens. Now your 2.5 inch lens is a very good all round a general purpose lens for cutting through thicker materials again than the 2 inch lens and we can even cut things like 9mm ply or MDF you can also cut some thick acrylics with that uh, lens it's still good quality for engraving however if you want the higher quality engraving as I mentioned you're better off with the focal distance that is a lot smaller now the 4 inch lens, uh, the spot size on that is a lot larger again and it's not very good for high quality engraving. Uh, you can't get high resolution images out of a 4 inch lens but the benefit of the 4 inch lens is that it will give us a greater focal tolerance that will allow us to cut through thicker materials like the 10 millimeter acrylic, 20 millimeter pine board or even 1 inch thick plywood. Now with some of these it does require several passes and uh, on this machine at 130 watt the 1 inch plywood would take approximately 2 cuts to get through however it does leave a sooty residue on the side so it's not something I do a lot of. Now this one here is the 20 millimeter um, pine board now this is cut with a 4 inch lens at uh, 5 millimeters a second around about 26 milliamps with a 130 watt laser and because we get that nice clean cut it's also a straighter edge than you would get with the other lenses of the two and a half or the two inch lens which means that if we stand the piece up on its side it doesn't topple over. Now if we cut the same material with a two and a half inch lens it has a sloped edge to it so the material would tilt or even fall over. So that's just a benefit of the four inch lens to be able to cut through that thicker material and that greater focal tolerance so let's have a look at the different lenses now. So here in this diagram I've got uh, four different lens types. Now I use the 2 inch, the 2.5 and, and the 4 inch but I've also put the 1.5 inch here just for reference. And you can see here that the lens is sitting here and the focal length is actually 1.5 inches from the bottom of the lens to that focal point. And that tolerance, that focal tolerance that we we're talking about is very small. And that has got to do with the, uh, the angle that the beam converges and diverges there at that point and as you can see as the lens uh, focal distances get larger that uh, focal tolerance uh, also increases. Now these diagrams are not exactly to scale and they're just there for representation just so that you can see the difference that uh, you have if I zoom in here we have a very small uh, area of focal tolerance where the beam is at its greatest um, power and then if we move along to the 2 inch lens we can see that uh, that tolerance gets larger 
and also to the two and a half and to the four inch lens. Now you also notice that the angle of the uh, convergence and divergence of this laser beam at this focal point, uh, the angle changes between uh, each different lens. And this uh, larger focal distance or focal tolerance gives us the ability uh, to cut through the thicker materials. It also reduces the angle of the cut. So if you're cutting through thick material, even if you do several passes on a two or a two inch lens, what happens is you do get a slight angle on the side of that workpiece on the cut side. And uh, that angle is still there on a four inch lens. However, the angle is much uh, reduced. So if you're cutting a 20 millimeter or a one inch piece of material, uh, that angle will allow it to stand up on edge rather than uh, topple over like it would on a two or two and a half inch lens. So one thing that I did mention just a little bit earlier was that uh, if you're engraving, the engraving quality as you're going up in uh, the lens selection actually uh, decreases. For example, on a one and a half inch lens, we have a very fine spot so that when the laser marks the material, it's very fine. Whereas if we get up to a four inch lens, that uh, spot size that it marks on the material is a lot greater and therefore would give you a lower resolution image. And I'll see if I can actually give you an example of that. And I'll just go and engrave on a piece of material with a two inch lens and a four inch lens, just to show you the difference. So here I've got two examples and I've got the uh, two inch lens engraving at the top and the four inch lens engraving at the bottom. Now you can see that the four inch lens does uh, really well on the uh, larger text, but once we get down to very fine detail, like the top line on each of those, which is one millimeter tall, we can see that on the two inch lens, it's quite crisp. And hopefully you can see that on the video, but each of the letters are, are separate. Whereas on the uh, four inch lens, all those uh, letters are now uh, sort of joined together and it's blurred. And that's because that spot size is a lot larger. And therefore, if you're trying to do very fine detail work like this, uh, they will um, start to join together. So if you're doing photos uh, engraving or fine text engraving, then a four inch lens is not suitable for that fine detail. So I'm using a 20 millimeter diameter lens on my machine and these tubes are handy because they can take all three different size focal length lenses. So if I use the tube in the orientation that's shown here, I can put a two inch lens down the bottom. And if I remove that uh, lens, I can also put a four inch lens at the top. And if I flip the tube over, this uh, mark where the four inch lens becomes this place where we put the two and a half inch lens. So very handy little units and um, worthwhile having one each for the different types of lenses that you use so that you don't have to keep taking the lens out, carefully storing it to put the other lens in. You can just store the, uh, the separate tubes in a safe place. So with the lens tubes that I use, uh, as you just saw, you can use um, a two and a half inch, a four inch and a two inch lens in the same tube. Now I've ordered several of these tubes and got uh, colors on them so I know which one's which. So my standard tube that I use is a two inch lens and the uh, focus lens is mounted down the bottom here. And it comes with this little device for uh, screwing it in. And um, that's quite handy. On the two and a half inch lens, now the, uh, the lens itself would normally, your two inch lens would be down the bottom, but the two, two and a half inch lens is at the top and it's uh, screwed in with the uh, thread there. So we need to make sure that the meniscus side is facing up towards the source of light. And again, we can uh, thread that in. And with our four inch lens, we use the top part of the tube and we also make sure that the meniscus side is pointing upwards and then we can uh, thread it in. So I'm gonna put the four inch lens in here now. Always be careful and open it up over a soft cloth. You don't want to uh, drop it down onto the ground and uh, have it break on you. Uh, I use the tissue paper that it come in to hold it and push it into place. So first of all, I assess to see whether, uh, which way the meniscus is facing. So if you place it on a hard surface and you can rock the, the lens, then you know that the meniscus is facing down. So we want to have that positioning upwards, so you just take note of that. And so I've used the, the tube with the paper there so I don't mark the lens. And the meniscus side is uh, as closest to my finger, so when it's in the laser machine, the flat side is down. So now I can take that out and then use the tool to uh, insert the screw thread.
Now you don't want to over tighten the screw thread so that you don't crack the lens, but you don't want the, the, um, the lens rattling around. So just as the lens catches, that's as far as you want to go, and the test would be to give it a shake. If it doesn't rattle, then the lens is in securely. If it rattles, then it will move while we're cutting and it will give us wavy cuts or uh, inconsistent engraving. So to change the lenses using this setup, what we'll do first of all is um, loosen the uh, air hose, disconnect that, and slide the lens tube out. Then we can unscrew the nozzle, and that was our four inch lens and now we can put our two and a half inch lens on there making sure that it's in the right orientation and screw that onto our laser nozzle. Now we can insert that back into the uh, laser lens tube holder, tighten it up and reattach the air hose. Now you will need to know what the focus distance is between the bottom of the nozzle and the workpiece as you would with any lens that you're using on your machine and to do that you would perform a ramp test. So what I'm going to do here is set up a ramp test. Now a ramp test is used to find the focus distance between the bottom of the nozzle and the work surface. So um, we know that for this case it's a two and a half inch lens which sits round about here. So we want two and a half inches from the bottom of the uh, lens to the top of the work surface. So what we're going to do is do a, a ramp test and we're going to cut along the edge of the piece of timber. I'm going to position the timber so that um, the nozzle is close to the edge but not touching. So we will just uh, move this lens up a bit. So maybe one or two millimetres from the bottom of the nozzle. And we're going to cut a straight line along the edge of this timber. And we're going to cut it as close to the edge as possible so that we can measure it with some digital calipers after the cut has been performed. So now that the cuts are being done, we can actually now move the laser over the top of the finest point of that cut. And we can see that the laser was out of focus at the beginning. It goes into focus somewhere in the middle here, and then back out of focus towards the end of that cut. So we're going to just jog the laser across until it's at the finest point of that cut. And then what we can do is use a set of di digital calipers or a feeler gauge to feel the gap between the bottom of the nozzle and the work surface. Now it's important not to move the work piece and we want to get as accurate as possible. I think I've just moved it but it's not going to affect the measurement. We have close to 7 millimetres at that point. So then you can make yourself up a feeler gauge. This one's off my red and black machine and this one's a 19 mil. So you can make up something similar or you can make a uh, feeler gauge, something similar to this one here, which I've set at seven millimeters between the bottom of the nozzle and the top of the workpiece. Or you can make a graduated step gauge, which I've made here from five to 10 millimeters for different types of lenses that you're using in case they have different focal distances between the bottom of the lens and the work surface. So when you're swapping between the lenses, if you were to use the four inch lens, which has a, uh, the lens sits roughly here on the tube, so it would be up here, it would be four inches from the bottom of the lens to the top of the workpiece. So you can perform the same ramp test and then find the uh, focal distance between the bottom of the nozzle and your work surface for your four inch lens, your two and a half inch lens, your two inch lens, basically whatever lenses you're using in the machine. It's always a good idea to find the exact focal point for each lens that you're using. So thanks for visiting MW Laser. Now this is not meant to be a comprehensive guide to laser lens selection, but just to give you the fundamentals on what the focal length is, the focal tolerance, and where you would use the different types of lenses on your laser machine for the various types of work that you're going to be doing, whether it's engraving or cutting thin materials up to the thicker materials. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos. Now these videos do take a lot of my time and I show your support. You can head to buymeacoffee.com forward slash MWLaser and your support would be much appreciated. Until next time, take care. Cheers.